Okay, so before I put the crankshaft in for the last time, I'm going to go ahead and check the end plate here on the camshaft. To check the end plate on the camshaft, if you install the cam and you look in here, which I know it's extremely hard to see on the camera, but you have your thrust plate where your bolts go in and then your gear. Well, in between the gear and the thrust plate is a gap. And you want a feeler gauge to check this. And you want a 3 and a 7. Now I'm going to pull it forward. You want your gap there to be between 3 and 7 thousandths. And my 3 goes in. My seven. I don't think my seven is, but it's kind of hard to tell since you got to reach behind the gear. So I'm gonna pull my gauge out of my stack here. Okay, so I have my seven thousands here. It does not appear to be going in. Well, right there, it just went into it. Like right here on top, that gauge doesn't, or this filler gauge doesn't go in at all. But it does kind of on the sides a little bit. It's probably okay. I think it's. It has a drag on it right there, so it's not overly loose. But the rest of the way around it, the gauge doesn't even go in. So, we'll probably leave that. If you need to change this thrust plate, there's a snap ring right here on the front of your gear and then you have to press this gear off of the camshaft and then that plate just slides on then you press your gear back on and then put your snap ring on to secure it so they're not too difficult to change if you have to change yours and I know mine sounds rough that's because there's no oil in it but this was just a dry test fit. So I'm gonna leave that alone. It's a, it's okay on spec, I think. So now I'm gonna pull it back out and I'm gonna put my lifters in. Then we'll install the cam and then we'll get the rear main in, the bottom of the rear main, and we'll set the crank in for the final time. Okay, so now that our end play is checked on our cam, now we're going to install our lifters back. And this is why it's important to put it into the tray to know where they go. Now, whenever you install these lifters, you need to lube them up with something. So I've got some of this Joe Gibbs engine assembly grease. You could use oil if you're going to start your motor pretty soon, but it's going to be a while before I get around to starting this engine. So I'm just putting a really thin coat on that lifter. And then just slide it down in the bore. And you're going to do that for all eight of your lifters. As far as these lifters are concerned, if they look in good shape, just reuse them. Okay, now that I got all those four down in there, 
I'm going to take some more of this grease. I'm just going to put it on the ends of these lifters. And that'll just keep having a dry break in. Because these, these pretty much get lubed from you know, some, some oil will roll down your push rods, the rest of it comes off your connecting rods. So just a little bit on there will help to keep having them dry. Now, once you get all eight done, we'll slide the camshaft in. Okay. Now obviously whenever you slide this in, most of your oil is going to get knocked off on your front cam journal here. So, before I actually put it all the way in, I will come back and put some more lube onto the last two journals. Okay, so when we put these bolts in, there's no need for any kind of Loctite since they got lock washers on them. And torque spec is 12 to 16. So I'm just going to go in the middle and put them at 14. And as you see, it's not very much. Okay. Now I'm going to take the grease. I'm just going to come in here and put some on all the lobes of the cam and our little gear here where either our distributor if it's a gas or for the diesel motor our injection pump drive gear will go. Okay, last step on installing our camshaft is going to be installing our hydraulic pump gear. Here's our hydraulic pump gear. And as you see, I got the flat side towards the transmission, the dish side is towards the engine. Okay, and just like our gear on front, the front, for our thrust plate, our torque spec is 12 to 16. So we're going for 14. And you'll have to hold the gears to get it to torque. But like I say, 14 is not a lot, so it shouldn't be too hard to hold. And whenever you torque these, do them in a cross pattern. And always just go back and just double check. Make sure that they all torque correctly. Okay. So there's our camshaft installed. So now it just has the little plate that goes over this to, to seal everything up. 
Okay, to install the rear main seal, you're basically going to stick this on the end of the seal, this on your block to align it. So now this half of our seal is installed. Okay, so we got our camshaft in, and we just set our crank in here. And we have our bottom half of our rear main seal in here. When you set this crank in here, you need to line up your timing marks on the front. The timing marks are those two dots right there. And you just need to have this gear meshed at those two dots. And once you do that, your cam is now timed to your crankshaft. So now we're ready to put our main caps on it. Okay, so since this is now the final time that I'm putting these main caps on, I'm gonna put some assembly loop on the bearing and some ARP ultra torque on the bolts. Okay, now remember, the arrow goes towards the front of the engine. On our thrust cap, I added just a little bit of extra onto the thrust surfaces. Okay, now for the rear main, I'm going to switch the camera around because it's a little more involved than just placing these caps. And it's a little more involved due to just the rear main seal, since the seal is a two, well, technically it's a four-piece seal, if you want to call it that, due to your two half moons and then these annoying little guys, which I'm not even going to use these, and I'm going to explain how I get away with not using these. Okay. So now we have silicone on our end of our seals, down our grooves, and a little bit on the cap. And we got it on our block surface. So now we're ready to put this guy in. And we want to verify that our seal goes down in our groove. We're going to take these little guys here. And we're going to push some silicone down in these grooves. and it'll actually start to come out the bottom. And once it starts coming out the bottom, we know that we have everything sealed up because we're compressing that silicone. And see, and right here you can see it actually coming out of the side of the cap. It's done that on both sides. So now I'm going to take more RTV with the nozzle and just stick it down in there and pump it. Now it's pushed more out and we're filled to the top. And we'll do the same thing on both sides. Okay, so now that our rear main seal, rear main cap, whatever you want to refer to it as, is now installed. I now need to torque down everything. Now the gas motor and the LP motor want to be torqued to 95 to 105 foot-pounds, which I would recommend doing 100. That's right in the middle. Now on a diesel, like I have, it's 110 to 115. 
So since I'm reusing old original bolts, I'm just going to go to 110. However, I'm not going to sit there and go straight to 110. I want to do what's called a staged torque. I first want to go to 50 or 55. I can even do 55, but that just splits it in half. And when I start to torque this, I want to do the middle cap first and then the outers. There's 55, and here's 110. And when you torque these, do it in one smooth motion. Okay, just double check. Okay, now, let's make sure our rear main didn't move. Thing looks good on it. Now just make sure that everything still moves nice and free. And everything looks good. Okay, so there's our crankshaft installed. 